Hi y'all, in this video, as the title might suggest, I'm going to be thinking a lot of people, uh, giving you a bit of an update and just uh, a bit of story time. So let's get to it. First of all, uh, I guess for the people who wonder what the thank you is about, uh, if you did not catch my last video, I'll put a link to it below. I won't blame you if you don't want to go watch it. It's not the happiest thing I've ever put out, or indeed that uh, anybody's ever put out. It's actually a rather sad video, I have to say. But what I was doing in that video was fundraising for my, uh, my best friend who uh, had to have emergency surgery on Christmas. Uh, they gave her a cloth to me because her colon was dying. She was the one who was re who uh, had cancer, and, and anyway, she survived the cancer, and then that started happening, so they had to give her the cloth to me. The surgeon thought he was going to have to make it permanent, but he said after the surgery that he thinks he saved just enough where they'll be able to reverse it, and so we're going to try for that in June, hopefully. But uh, So that happened on Christmas Day. She stays in the hospital for a few days. Uh, and then they put her in a rehabilitation facility, a transitional one where they have occupational therapists to teach you how to manage this. You know, welcome to your new life. This is something you've got to live with. Here are all the things you need to know. You know, so she's supposed to be there for a little bit of time uh, to learn that, uh, and then you know, go home. Well, they had to take her off some of her medication because she, well, she'd had surgery, and so she was on blood thinners, and you know, surgery and blood thinners are bad, so they had to cut that back. But then she got an infection. And so they had to change up her medications, one of the side, possible side effects of, of which would be a stroke, and she in fact had a massive one um, on the right side of her, her brain. So that's what that was about. And um, I've been given uh, private messages, emails, direct messages. A lot of people reached out to say you know, th nice things. Uh, I didn't know how that was going to play because I know there are a lot of assholes on the internet, but um, I don't think I got one asshole comment now that I think about it. I, I can't remember one, so that surprised me. Uh, some people would, would write things like, I'm sorry that I can't do anything, but I'll you know I'll pray for Mindy. And some of them are like, I know you're an atheist, but uh, I'm going to pray. You're in my thoughts. Uh, I'm an atheist, but Mindy really appreciates that because Mindy is actually a very devout Christian. Uh, and, you know, we've been besties for 20-some you know, whatever years. And people ask how we manage that relationship, and I said, it's very simple. We're both Americans. We truly believe, we're like, we've really bought into the idea that uh, you have an absolute right to be wrong. And that's how we, you know, that works for us. Uh, we've never had a fight. We, we don't argue. It's just not a thing. Um, you know, she's an intelligent person. She's you come to one, one uh, set of conclusions on a subject that I've come to a different set of conclusions on the same subject. Uh, I don't think her reasons are valid. If I thought they were valid, I would be a Christian. I don't, and I'm not. But, you know, it cuts the other way. So anyway... Um, those kinds of gestures aren't nothing. Uh, I appreciate the articles people sent me, uh, even though I've, I've read them all. Believe me, I've researched this heavily. Uh, but if you think you've run it, if, if you've got an article and you think maybe I haven't read it, please send it to me. The worst that happens is you've given me information I already already have, uh, and in which case no harm no foul. Or you may be telling me something, telling me something new that I would appreciate knowing. So you know whatever it is you have, I'm interested in it. Uh, unless it's like, you know, VD, in which case you can, you can keep that. And then, of course, there are the people who sent in con various contributions. Um, you know, I get something like uh, $8.42. And I think about that, I'm like, this is one of several things. It, by the way, for those people who are running, the money's not for me. It's for Mindy. It goes straight to them. But it would come in, and it's eight forty two or eight forty three or whatever it was. And it's like, either this person's like a numerologist uh, or this person, re you know, this is their lucky number, or you know they just really their OCD and I don't know, you know that kind of thing maybe, or there are people who have really looked for every last cent they can scrape up, or they just had this is what they had in their PayPal account, uh, you know, and it's very touching. Um, some people were very generous. A couple people sent in a hundred dollars. Someone sent in five hundred. I mean, it's I don't want to talk about it too much because I'm going to get teary eyed. I won't get teary eyed if I'm not in my house, but when I'm in, at home, and I set, I set this uh, out when I first started this channel, I was like, I'm not going to be guarded. I'm in my own home, and, and if I feel an emotion, I'm going to express it. But if I'm outside of the house, believe me, I'm cold as ice. I mean, you're not going to, no lip quivering, nothing. But in ho at home, it's, it's different. But anyway, um, just some extraordinarily kind acts of generosity, and some of the notes that came along with it, uh, with a contribution of twenty dollars or fifty, or in one case, uh, a gentleman uh, sent in a hundred dollars. His mother had had a severe stroke, but she's not going to survive, and he can't spend it on her because well, he can, but it's not going to do anything. And so he says, 
I may as well spend it on a stroke victim where it's going to do some good, you know. It's... His mom is dying. <laughs> and some ass clown he knows on the internet has a friend who has a stroke and he decides to, you know, send her some money to help out. <laughs> so I'm not reading them. Ha! Not yet. Uh, but some people did ask if I'm going to read the comments. Um, it's a fair question. Uh, I might not read them because I want to get Mindy uh, on the channel uh, reading them. Uh, but she can't read really well right now, and I'll go into why in a minute. Uh, so once we get her reading improved as she recovers, you know, function, uh, that's something I would like to do. It's obviously up to her whether she wants to be on it. Uh, Beyond the, the channel, I mean, you know, beyond the video again. Um, so it, it's a fair question. It's legit. I'm going to raise it with her, you know, at an appropriate time. It's not going to be any time soon. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the reading thing. It, um, as I mentioned in the last video, she she had the stroke on the right side of her brain, which means it's the effect of the left side of her body. But um, there's something called um, uh, hemi neglect or left side neglect. It's predominantly left side neglect. It's most common with strokes on the right side of the brain, where you get this, the, uh, the, the defect, blanks out a part of reality that no longer exists for this person. So it's not, it's not like uh, her, her eyes stop working. The signals get, are coming in, they just have nowhere to go. So this part of her body, like her, her left arm, uh, her vision from here over, you know, that whole part of the environment and her body, they don't exist in her brain. She does, she's not aware of them. And it's... Uh, if you go back and watch the video where she and I were on there, and I pointed to, she asked, she noticed that she'd lost her coffee, which is good because she's aware that I'd taken it away. Uh, and I pointed at it, but I did not get up immediately to get it for her. I waited until she acknowledged it. And the reason for it is because with left side, um, this left side neglect, the way you train the person's, help the person's brain learn to recognize that part of reality again, is you have to make them interact with that, that void, that, you know, that absence of reality for them. And so I put the cup as best I can right at the border between where she can't see, where she has no sense sensory awareness, and where she does. And I refuse to help her until she forces herself to acknowledge the existence of that object by having to look further to the left. The problem with that is, though, you can't tell her, look to the left, because she doesn't let, recognize what left means. She knows that left is the opposite of right in the abstract, but when you talk about the left side of her body, that for whatever reason, that doesn't mean anything to her. She has the right side of her body, and then there's the other side of her body. So she has a right arm, and she has a left arm. She knows she was born with a left arm, but it's not this arm when she holds it. This is, this is a different arm. And she's like, I've got, I, they keep telling me I've got to introduce myself to this new arm. I don't know where it came from. So she's got that kind of confusion going on. Reading, she can read a, a line. If you have a sentence, she can read that sentence. But then when you drop back down, because you have to index back left, and that's where the problem comes, comes in. Because she can follow it to the right, but then the, the, the next step of now I've got to look back to the left is where she gets hung up. And it, the best way I can explain it is if you've ever had a word, you know the word, you know there is a word that has this definition, you've used it plenty of times in your life, it's right on the tip of your tongue, you just cannot spit it out. That is what that entire area of her, of her dead zone is. She knows that there's a dead zone. She knows there are supposed to be things there, but when you when you get to that barrier, there it it goes it goes crazy. I was having lunch with her yesterday, and uh, I put her coffee into the into that little void, so she would have to you know search around for it because we got to keep teaching her, helping her, you know, reminding her to look around for things. And when she talks about this part of the universe for her, it's not over there. It's it's it, actually it's basically like a separate dimension. She's like, well, I've got to open the coffee. It's not that she doesn't know the words, because if you put it on the right side, there's no confusion. But when you put it on the left, it's that being on the left that messes up the conceptual uh, framework. And so she has to open it. In other words, she's trying to get into the area where the coffee is, but, but her brain can't make sense of that yet. Um, it, it's one of the few times that I've actually nearly lost it near her uh, was I was talking to her from her dead zone. And she's having a perfect conversation with me. And then I step over right into their line of sight, and she's like, when did you get here? Everything that had just happened, she had no idea it was me, even though when she was talking to me, she knew it was me. 
It's the transition from that dead zone into her live zone where the information doesn't all go. And it is just, I mean, we've been talking for like an hour. I've been sitting there just going on and you're talking about memories, blah, blah, blah. But the moment I make that moved into her, her line of sight, that part of reality and this part of reality are completely different. She has no idea how I got there. She's like, where did you come from? When did you get here? You know, where have you been all this time? She was angry because I hadn't been there. I'm like, I've been here. I've just, you know, been there, which isn't here for you. It's hard to watch uh, some of the really high IQ be brought low by, you know, something as silly as sounding as a stroke. So, um, that said, she's much better now than she was a month ago. I don't go visit her every day. We've decided that. I would visit her only once a week. Uh, for one, I'm the most, I'm like a, a recluse in a lot of ways, so I don't need to talk to my friends every day uh, or my family every day. I'm perfectly fine not talking to people for a couple weeks at a time. Uh, and two, uh, it's not just because I don't want to be there, but uh, with my distance from not seeing her every day, I'm going to notice things that other people won't notice. In the same way, you don't notice your own children growing day to day, but people who visit every couple months do. So I I notice improvements that other people say aren't happening. I'm like, no, no, this is where she was last time I was here, and so here's what she's doing now. There is a there is an improvement in this. There is an improvement in that. Uh, you know, there's this problem, that problem, but these things are getting better. Her speech is getting better. Her voice continues to get better. She had lost the control of her uh, vocal cords for a while, so her voice was she's paralyzed here, and the left side of her vocal cord was. She couldn't swallow well. Um, what they do for stroke patients is they have a thickener they put in the water, so it's really like well. It's, I wouldn't drink it if I didn't have to. But you, you have to put it in the spoon. You can take it in the spoon and do it like that and it won't fall out. And then uh, while they're swallowing, the nurse will sit there and watch the muscles contract to make sure it's going down. Uh, if, you're, and it, if not, what can happen is they can inhale some of the water, which, which doesn't sound like much. But uh, it's actually a very, it, it is a very deadly thing just to inhale small droplets of water if you have an impaired diaphragm. If you can't cough it out, uh, it can kill you. Small particles of food can kill you. Uh, lying, fla lying flat is not something you should let them do. They need to uh, be able to you know, sit up uh, so it keeps them from getting uh, different kinds of lung infections. Lots of things you can do or fail to do properly with a stroke patient and kill them. And that's one of the reasons why, even though she wants to come home, you know, she wants to get out of there as soon as possible and get home, uh, I'm telling her, no, you need to stay here a little bit longer because... Uh, you know, we have to get we have to finish building some things. I mean, I'll talk about that in a minute, uh, and getting other supplies and whatnot into the house for her because if they're not there, she's going to be in an unsafe environment. And it doesn't sound like much, but the fact that you don't have something that will help her sit up at the right angle can help produce a death. Uh, one fall. I don't know if you, I don't know if anybody watches the Dragon's Den, but I was watching one episode and this person, um, the richest guy there is being pitched something about this uh, a cane holder where on the wall and he's like is this really important it's not a big deal it actually is a big deal for people who use canes people who are over 50 years of age who fall and break a hip um, have about a, a, a third of them die within a year that's their life expectancy for a third of them after they break a hip this isn't just the elderly this is people over over 50 it is a very serious thing and you know one fall that's it. One, you know, one, one bad turn, you smack a hip, you're dead. Uh, so, because you know when you're recovering from a broken hip, you can't go out and get up and walk. You can't move around as much because you're supposed to be bedridden. Exactly what you don't want to be, you know, when you've had this major trauma, uh, it can kill you. You're vulnerable to all kinds of infections. So you have to be really, really careful with that kind of stuff. And so she's obviously not happy about it, but you know she's she understands. And the other time that I almost lost it with her is when I went to visit her uh, and I told her I was going to come back in the morning and see her in the morning uh, if, she, if she was okay with that. And she said, potted plants don't get to have opinions. You know, 
Not gonna cry. It's sorry shit. So, uh, all that is to say, my undying gratitude to everyone who has sent anything in. Uh, by the way, I did not expect it to do, I was hoping it would do, you know, well, but I didn't expect it to do too well, because it's the internet, you never know what you're going to get. I thought maybe I might get a bunch of, you know, die in a fire type comments. You never really know what the internet's going to give you. Um, but we're about 80% of the way to where I want to be for, you know, to get everything done right. So she can get home. So if, if you haven't sent anything in, please do. Uh, if you already have, uh, you've done enough. Thank you. Thank you very much as it is. So, story time. When, uh, when she had cancer, she had to have a mastectomy. You know, they, they gave her the mastectomy. And her oncologist wanted to get, get a 3D mammogram of her remaining breast. Insurance company denied it, so they wouldn't pay for it. So, doctor calls, asks why, and they said, well, she, she has no history of cancer in her right breast. He's like, she had no history of cancer in her left one, you know, until just a moment ago. <laughs> until we looked and it was that she had stage 3 cancer. Uh, it's, it's amazing she lived. They say, because of, you know, she has really big boobs to start off with. And she had a very large cancerous uh, growth in there. Um, but anyway, so they resubmitted it, denied. Resubmitted it, denied. It, it, it's, I mean, it's not like tens of thousands of dollars or anything, but the proposition that we want to do this one cheap thing because she doesn't, she hasn't had cancer in that boob yet, even though she's just had cancer in her breast, uh, which is costing us, you know, I don't know, 25000 whatever it costs the insurance company to take care of a surgery like that, uh, that they don't pass on to the, 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 uh, the, insure, the insured person. It's it just like, I was like, how can you, that is like the easiest call ever. If you catch it now, you don't have to pay the twenty, thirty, forty thousand to do the mastectomy later. Um, but I thought that was crazy. You ain't seen nothing yet. So when Mindy was first in the rehab facility, she had one type of colostomy bag. There were about a dozen different kinds, and this one was one that she could do herself because she could clean herself. She could you know, she had use of her arms and everything like that. Uh, so that's one kind of colostomy bag you get. After the stroke, she needs a different kind of colostomy bag because she can't stand unaided, um, which means she can't shower uh, unaided. One, the, the kind she had when she could do everything by herself was you could shower with it, but you could not get in a bath with it. You can't submerge it in water. Now she has to take baths, but she can't submerge it in water. And the insurance company won't buy her the one that lets her take a bath in it because the other one should be working just fine. It was working when she first got it. That, that model, yes, before she had the stroke, that one was working just fine. Now that she's had the stroke, it works just fine, except for, you know, when you want to clean her. It's, it's like crazy shit. So the price difference there uh, isn't all that much. It's like, you know, two bucks or three bucks per uh, per bag, and you know, the wafer and everything. But they won't price match. It's not like they'll pay, the, well, we'll pay, we'll, we'll pay for this other one, what we would pay for this, and then you cover the rest. So what we would pick up would be the, you know, the two and a half dollars or whatever it is. No, they won't cover any of it. So that's $11 per day for a bag. That's like a car payment. This is, she has... She has insurance, and uh, you know it, it seems to be the kind of insurance where uh, you get it and you, you pay you pay for it, and then when it comes time to use it, you can't afford to use it because everything's still so damned expensive. What's the point of it? You might as well just you know uh, grab grab a credit card, people, and pay your medical bills on that, and then declare bankruptcy. You can do that, but uh, you know anyway, he who dies with the most debt wins. It's just crazy kind of shit, and you would think that putting a ramp on onto a house would not be a terribly expensive thing to do. Until you go out and you look and you realize it's about $2,500. I'm like, well, I think we can better that if we uh, do a bit of uh, price shopping around. So we got it down to about 1000 to do the ramp. Uh, and then, but, you know, because of the way the, the, the ramps are designed, you can't have any one, the, uh, just one ramp before it gets to a plateau. It cannot exceed 30 inches of rise. So it's like, so I had to build a porch. You know, that's another like seven hundred fifty dollars. It's like, oh my god, it's just never, it's just never ending shit. And then we can't get her in the shower in her own in her own bathroom because, it, you know, with the wheelchair and try to get her. Anyway, it's crazy. So now they've got to redo the tub because they have like a tub that is for baths. It doesn't have a shower component, and they have a shower that has no bath component. Brilliant idea until you realize that they're not equivalently easy to use when they're separated that way. 
So they've got to build, the turn this tub into a shower, plus the devise a way to get her into it, because you got to get over a tub, you know, the ledge of the tub. So fortunately, uh, we're going to get the supplies for that at wholesale, not at retail, uh, which is, you know, that, that saves some money. So, uh, you know, as, as I said, I, I did not know what to expect, but given the discounts we're getting from friends who are you know, like, oh, yeah, we'll just, you know, we own, who own businesses or whatever, one of them is a plumber, he has a plumbing business, and he's got a contractor guy who's going to come up with the other supplies, and just gonna, it's going to be a wholesale. And so I was thinking, like, this money might not go as far, and I think it will, but it's going a lot further than I thought, and like I said, uh, now we're about 75, 80% of the way there. I thought we'd maybe get 40%, but that was at a much higher price for everything. But it was a little bit of judicious looking around. We're getting that down, so that's wonderful. Uh, hopefully, we get her home within about two weeks. And it, incidentally, it's not an artificial timeline. The insurance company, again, in its infinite wisdom, is saying it's time for her to go. Like, but she's still got rehab to do. Yes, but she can just do all that at home. No, actually, as it turns out, we don't actually have a rehab facility lying around on the street to go, you know, pick up and take into her house. So it, it's crazy. Um, that was uh, the plan that they got under Obamacare. So they really got their money's worth. Um, now on financial bit, uh, this is really weird for me. Money is always an awkward topic, uh, especially for me and my own finances because I don't like to talk about it. But um, So I have like the YouTube thing I do. This pays for itself plus a little bit of extra. I call it my beer fund. You know, I don't drink beer. It's really for coffee, which is my one, like, indulgence. And I've had to... I, I mean coffee you get at a latte shop. Now I, I'm drinking regular coffee uh, that I make myself. What I'll be eating for, like, the next two months, I guess, is going to be ramen and a lot of sausage. Uh, I'll be doing some gourmet ramen. But, uh, but I have some good recipes for you people, by the way. Get some kimchi. It helps. It's wonderful. So that'll be great. Uh, so that way I can, you know, every spare penny that I get coming in from... YouTube and from other stuff that I do in the real world to make money occasionally. Uh, just so, you know, that can go um, to helping them out. One of the things about it is I do not actually work full time. Uh, I can't even say I work part time. I work occasionally. And as I do, con I, I'll do some consulting here or there. Uh, you know, it pays well. Uh, I can do a, a case. You know, I'll spend, I'm you know, working just a few days per year. And, uh, you know, it gets me enough to get by. It's not that I can make so much money. It's just that I, I don't have any debt. The only bills that I really have are, like, ones to live off of month to month. You know, I've got, uh, you know, phone, uh, internet, uh, food. I have virtually no bills. Um, so it's very, it's very inexpensive to be me. And I like it that way. It's not like I'm, oh, poor you, poor me, or whatever. It's not, it's not that at all. I am a minimalist at heart, and I love simplicity. And my life is very simple, and I'm an extremely happy person. Uh, I, I watch people who work and work and work, and the more money they get, the more things they buy, which puts them further in debt because they can't afford to pay for it. And then, you know, they keep working. I'm like, I'm not, I was not put on this earth to uh, live to work. I work to live, uh, not the other way around. And uh, if I, I, mean, I don't have a credit card, I don't have loans, if, uh, if I can't afford something, I just go without, or I save up for it, which is, you know, I plan on buying a new computer this year, and I've been saving up for it, you know, 50, 60 bucks a month for the last two years. It's not a you know, trivial amount of money. I planned the life the, the life cycle of my computer, and I knew when I needed to start saving to replace it, and then this shit happened, so I'm like, oh, this is way more important than a new computer. And uh, one of the other things I've had to do, though, and this is, this is really troublesome for me, I've had to put off having surgery, because I, I was going to have surgery. I've talked about this a couple times over the uh, years, and I'm finally, I was like, I'm finally going to do it, Go ahead and just uh, you know get the next surgery I need on, on my leg. I'm not gonna be able to do that because I've got to, I'm going to be the muscle around the house uh, helping Mindy uh, lift you know getting getting around uh, on the transition. So I'm gonna be like a hawk on that shit. So definitely can't be recovering from surgery for that uh, because it does not work hopping on one leg. I, I assume I've not tried it, but it's difficult enough on two legs. So I uh, I. Just, I will be having surgery, I think, next year, maybe the year after. Uh, so I've had to put that off. It's very interesting. But the, the interesting thing here is, like, how is it that uh, I, uh, with, with the way that I do my finance, I'll take a, I'll take a case and consult on it. Sometimes doing litigation strategy with a lawyer, 
Uh, sometimes actually just the expert witness, although I haven't done that in a couple of years. The, la uh, the last time I was in court as an expert witness was actually a, a hysterical case, which uh, I just did for free because it was so good. Um, <laughs> the, the equations that the officer came up with the algebra of the equations he did correctly. I was like, yes, yes, uh, given this equation, you plug this and plug that, yeah, that's definitely the answer that you get. Where these came from, though, is, an, is a complete mystery to me. Um, as I, I can assure you that these kinetic energy equations of, of his did not come from the work energy theorem. Uh, I know not from whence they came, but uh, one of the things uh, for people who do, officers who uh, go to learn how to be reconstructionists and whatnot, uh, they learn a couple derivations <laughs> because there's nothing more, uh, you can do nothing more to undercut a lawyer strategy than if he says, can you derive this equation? And then you say, why, yes, hand me your marker. I will derive this equation. <laughs> but you can do nothing better to help him than if you derive it incorrectly. So I'm looking through the guy's work and I'm like, the reciprocal zone, which is when two cars, you know, if cars meet this way, the reciprocal zone is going to be somewhere over here where the crash is going to wind up. Like, you're not going to hit this way and come back that way. It just doesn't happen. And if a, a train and a small car hit, you think the train doesn't get taken off the track and pushed, you know, half a mile that way. It's the car that gets pushed a half a mile that way. So that's the, that's the expected place where the, the crash should wind up given certain conditions. This guy had it all backwards. I'm looking, I'm like, this doesn't add up. So I'm going through it. I'm like, he left out a square. Very important because what drives the way kinetic energy equations work is velocity. It's the square of the velocity. It's really important. Every time you double your speed, you quadruple your kinetic energy. And he didn't check it with momentum equations. Uh, so it was really, they let him get up there and testify, and I'd worked with the, law, the lawyer to hear the questions you need to ask him. Uh, don't, don't confront him, just let him do his wrong derivation. Leave it up, though. Make sure you leave it up so when I get on the stand, I can, in this case, like in a heartbeat. It took longer for me to, for my introduction and, you know, my background and whatever, uh, then it took to show why the guy's full of shit before the district attorney's like, uh, Your Honor, can we sidebar? And they, they wanted to dismiss the, ch the charges. It was great. I'm like, yeah, this is excellent. It was wonderful. But I do that. Um, none of my expenses in life require me to have a great deal of capital around, even medical expenses, because my medical care is taken care of because of some doctors that tried to kill me when I was having surgery. Uh, I don't have... Uh, anyway, uh, my battery's about to die. So I don't have to I don't have to worry about that for me. Uh, so I don't I don't really have any bills that are going to come my way. So I don't need to have a great deal of cash lying around. But with something like this, if they had told me in advance that it was going to be like this, I would have gotten a couple contracts and gone out and had the money lying around because I can't just go out and do it on you know. Yes, I need someone who's you know being persecuted by the cops. You know you just can't go get that because I will only take certain cases. I won't work on ones where the person's guilty. Uh, I'm only going to do it where the cops are like trying to screw someone who's innocent over. Uh, and those cases don't arise every day. It takes a little bit of time for one to percolate through. But uh, a lawyer friend of mine um, might have one coming my way, so we shall see. So with that, uh, you know, please, I'll put a link to the other thing for Mindy below. If you haven't sent something in yet, please do. Uh, she will greatly appreciate it, and one day we will both be on camera uh, probably crying like little bitches reading it. All right, um, have a great day.